Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of Road to TG World 2018, 2019, 2019, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today guys. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel. And if you are watching live on Twitch with me, thank you so much for joining me today. Now, we are moving on with our um, review of the Brazil deck. With this Zoropod, which was the only non-Shrine of Punishment deck that did... Um, that got top 8 out of the whole tournament. Um, there were 7 Shrine of Punishment decks in the top 8 and then 1 non Shrine of Punishment deck which was the Zoropod. So we have Zorg GX with its ability trade 210 HP, Giant's Attack, Righteous Feeding, dealing 20 damage for each of your following in play. Um, we have the Golisopod in combination with Zorg, 210 HP as well, its attack first impression deals 30 damage plus 19 more. Um, if Kalisopod was on the bench the previous turn and Armor Press deals 100 damage and you take 20 less damage from attacks. And finally we have Crossing Cut GX, yeah, Crossing Cut GX which deals 150 damage and you switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. So really good card overall. We have 1-1 uh, Macario Line, its ability smooth over allows um, Zorg to draw whatever card it needs so no need for Mallow. Um, the 1-1 one -one line is a bit unreliable, but that is completely fine. And then we have the one Rank Guru for resource management. We have the, the Den, which with its Electric Chain attack deals 30 damage plus 30 more if there's an Electric Pokemon on the bench. And then with a Choice Band, that's 90 times 2 against a uh, very weak Pokemon such as Rayquaza GX, and you have the 180 damage. And we have the Tapical Code to make sure that we have um, damage for or damage possibility for the, the Den. And finally, we have the two Tapulele for draw support. Supporters wise, we are running four Guzma, three Cynthia, three Apricorn Maker, double Kukui, a single Judge, and double Ace Rola. We have four Ultra Ball, two Timer Ball, and three Nest Ball to set up. We have um, three Choice Man to increase our damage output. We have two Devoured Field. We have one Switch, one Stretcher, one Palpat, one Max Potion, and one Counter Catcher. 4 TCs and 3 Grass round out the deck. The deck remains very similar to its previous format counterpart, except that um, it loses puzzles, it gains a few new tool cards, it's using the Den now in order to counter the Rayquaza, and we shall see how this does against the meta, which is currently filled with baby puzzle Garbodor decks. So I would like to go first. Um, Okay, so um, Litranger, Dylan, hello guys, thanks so much for being here. <sighs> These hands is what I've been getting for the whole day. Just completely dead hands, no matter what the guy play. <laughs> Just completely, completely, disastrously dead hands, which is very sad. At least we get the turn two armor press going though. At least we get that, right? And we seem to be up against, since this is not Baby Boss card, I assume this is, um, I assume this is the Shrine, uh, not the Shrine, sorry, the regular uh, Malamar deck with uh, Marshadow and whatnot. I assume this is that deck. There's the Inkei. I think Zoropod with Promo Lorentis could actually be good against all the Shrine decks. Zoropod with Promo Lorentis actually feels good against the, the Shrine decks, I think. We're gonna see an Acrobike. Discarding another Acrobike. We see a Marshadow, that's understandable. I mean, we are at a big threat. Right, we are. We are in the in the realm of possibilities. We could end up losing very soon. However, that ultra wall top deck is definitely very very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and discard these two. The Lele will get me a Cynthia here. Lele will get me a Cynthia. And hopefully the Cynthia will find me and Zorua's and Nest Balls and we shall get going. I'm gonna go ahead and place the Choice Band here. I'm going to knock out with Armor Press to make it as hard as possible for my opponent to kill. And... 
We draw into six completely useless cards. So let's just harbor press because why not? We take a prize. She's a Zoroark. I thought about Ultra Walling for Zorua, but I need to save that Ultra Wall for a uh, Lele. Definitely need to save the Ultra Wall for the Lele. There we see the Malamar. Into the Necrozma, and then Marshadow puts me to sleep. Yeah, Hypnosis does the trick. Okay. So we do wake up, and I can KO this guy with the hand that I have, so I'm going to go for it, right? I can GX KO that guy, which is nice. And then I definitely promote the Wimpud, I feel. I definitely promote the Wimpud. Um, if my opponent's going to put something to sleep, might as well be that. And we get two prizes, so despite our terrible draws, our opponent is actually worse. <laughs> okay. We see a choice band, we see two energy, and we see hypnosis yet again. We see hypnosis yet again. Okay, so let me think this through. If I Lele for Guzma and Armor Press to KO the Malamar, that should be enough, right? That should be enough to where? Uh, Slugma, Macargo, yeah. Okay, so what's my plan here? Do I get double Zorg or do I get one Zoro, one Slugma? No, I think double Zorg. That makes more sense. And then I definitely ultra all away these two. Two cards I'm not going to need. And I will grab my Lele, I will Guzma, bring that up. Then this guy will do 220 damage minus 20. That's 200 damage. So my Golisabad will survive the hit, right? And then maybe I will have double trade and then I need either a Sorola or a DC to essentially win the game. So here we go. Here we go. Hello, Sapphiro's dog. This game in the bag, potentially, potentially this game in the bag. My opponent could choose to use um, Moon's Eclipse GX here, which would be annoying. Not the end of the world, but just annoying. Uh, we see the Orange Guru, we'll see the draw three. I feel like these are the games where people need to learn to save time for the both of us and just concede. Mysterious treasure for Lele. But wow, there's a trash challenge. I had not realized my opponent's running at least a 1 1 trash challenge here. Okay, so my opponent finds Sinke. I assume my opponent doesn't have to play Lele. So my. <laughs> my Elo might have gone down so much so that. My opponents just don't. Um, don't have double Lele's. So we can't attack the Marsh out of this turn. That's fine. That is completely, completely fine. We do flip one heads. We do have a Max Potion. We do have an Acerola left. We could find a Guzma. It's only our... Well, we probably don't want to find Guzma though. Okay, so I'm gonna Choice Band and then I'm gonna Cynthia. I might just manually retreat here, which is completely fine. No more GX attacks for my opponent. I'm gonna trade one Devoured Field. And the switch all but guarantees the game, I feel. Yeah, the switch and the grass all but guarantees the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and retreat into the Wimpud. And this should be game. If my opponent goes after Zorg, then I can just promote whatever, switch, grass, KO. If my opponent KOs a Golisabad, then I need a DC, which is also fine. Um, off of double trade. Oh, jeez, we lose the... 
my opponent finds a field lower. Okay, so that might make this a bit tricky. That might actually make this a bit, a bit tricky. Will my opponent find Kuzma as well? Or can we find our third choice band? Okay, my opponent plays Cynthia, so he's only gonna take one price card here, which is good news, right? Good news for sure. Um, Zlokma, I wish I now wish this was a Macargo. There's Elo, yeah, there's hidden Elo on PTCGO for sure. Okay, so my opponent goes for the full moon star, which is fine because now, as long as I find a DC, right? As long as I find a DC, this should be game. As long as I find a DC, eventually, this should be game or a choice band. If I find choice band or DC. Um, I'm gonna play this to thin. I'll grab this. I'll grab the cargo, I guess. There's one choice band and three DCs. If I can switch retreat KO this guy, that should be enough. Odds are not in my favor though. Odds are definitely not in my favor. Okay, so we find the max potion. I, I can still do this. There's a DC. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I don't even think I need to max potion. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. I'll do this. And then my Guzma wins me the game. Right? I guess I'll max potion to then. Guzma wins me the game. I'll devour field as well. I don't need that. And righteous. What do I think about Zorg GX? Um, Sapphira's Dog. I think Zorak GX is one of the best cards in the format by far. Um, why would I recommend you for the next Premier Tournament in Argentina? Maybe Zorak GX with Garbodor. I feel like that's one of the best decks at the moment. Okay, my opponent needs to either Marshadow or Judge Me. And he does not judge me. Will he Marshadow me? If he marshadows me, then he's in a great spot. If he doesn't, which he doesn't, then boosts my energy, gets me the KO, and gets me the win. Yeah, I feel much more comfortable with this deck than with... Um, than with the Shrine of Punishment decks. And first impression for the KO, and our last price card. Um, so yeah, Zora Garbutter. I feel has a good chance against all the all the annoying puzzle decks, and then I think Zora could just play weakness policy again because all the puzzle decks don't play um, all the puzzle decks. The baby puzzle shrine decks don't play field lore, so um, weakness policy could be a good inclusion as well in Zora decks right now. Um, though choice one is much more valuable, but it could be a good inclusion. Yeah, could be a good inclusion. Okay, so I feel like this is going to be Nakanadel Stagataka, which could be a tough matchup for sure. Could be a tough matchup for sure. We get to go first, and we have a much more, um, a very different start than the previous game. Very, very different start than the previous game. And there it is. So let's nest ball for the Zorua. And then we do have a, uh, we do have one more nest ball prized. I don't like playing three nest balls. I'm using the lists as they are, but I really don't like playing nest balls. Uh, three nest balls rather. I think it's four or, or like, I don't know. Um, so let's nest ball here for, I believe another Zorua, right? I don't really need Colossus, but that much this game. And then the more Zorks, the merrier, right? The more Zorks, the better it is for us. So we'll see how this goes. We shall see how this goes. And let me plug my phone to charge while my bonus turn is going on. There we go. You guys heard the, the charging noise. And okay, so my opponent chose to Guzma to preserve his um, Naganadel, or his Poipol rather. So I'm gonna grab a Zorg and then uh, 
choice band probably matters quite a bit here. Okay, so I think I'm gonna Ultra Ball these and this for a Lele for a Cynthia. And I'm gonna choice band the active. I think that's the best thing to do here. Um, Cynthia. And then choice band the active. Well, Cynthia, we're looking for DCE, of course. That's not a DCE, though. We can trade. Oh, this is an ugly trade. I think I trade the Calissa, but th that was an ugly trade for sure. And no, no DC for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the grass. I really needed to set the tooling kill on that stack attacker right away, though. Really needed to do that. We see a copy guide for five. Another stack attacker, and then a pass. Uh, so Apricorn Maker doesn't it like it finds me an ultra, but it doesn't find me too much good stuff. I think I can trade a Zoro here because Acer Oles is how I win this game. I feel Acer Oles is how I'm going to win this game. Ooh, double heads. That's really cute. That is really, really cute. Then I definitely trade the Apricorn Maker here. Definitely, definitely trade the Apricorn Maker. And that Coco, probably not too useful. And Choice Band, okay. So, yeah, just how much damage is that? 110, 120 minus 30, that's 90. So 90 is enough to do it, KO this Takataka. That's good enough. I want to save those two spots. One for Slogma, one for a Wimput, potentially. But yeah, just getting these first two prizes is going to be really, really good for us. Really, really good. We see a Kuzma, that's completely fine. Is my opponent going to attack me? This deck, like, this deck is also really bad. <laughs> I think if you're not running Zorg, you need to be running like 12 draw supporters or something ridiculous like that in order to keep up. Here we see a trade number one. I do find that, which is nice. Uh, the Kukui, 150 minus 31, 20. Yeah, I don't think that Kukui is gonna be too relevant. Like it's not gonna be the game defining supporter that something else could be and then i'm gonna trade i definitely pursue the stack attack here though i definitely pursue the stack attack so i don't yeah i don't i don't ultra -all. i don't ultra -all. it's all about the self-sustaining zorg here it's all about the self-sustaining zorg and in a format where you cannot shut off zorg that has to be the best deck that has to be the best deck no matter how much baby puzzle shrine there is, I still think Zorg is gonna be the best deck. Zoro Garb is probably the best deck. Okay, Cartana removes our energy, that's fine. It's really no big deal. Uh, we see a Cynthia, so my opponent might finally be able to get his first hit in. And hello Paul, I'm doing well, how about yourself? We're gonna see the baby dust main, that's also completely fine. And we see the beast trade, that is perfect. Okay, so our prizes was one nest ball, which is nice. There's a whip but also that I was looking for earlier. Uh, no DC is prized. So I'm gonna go ahead and trade the Ultram. This is where I wish I had my cargo set up a long time ago. Um, I'll trade the Lele, I guess. And there's a DC, very nice. So I'll trade the Zorg. We shall trade the Zorg. And then I'll bench this. I mean, I guess I use an Acerola here just so that I get the grass energy back because I now have access to Goldisopod. And then I'll do that. I'll do this. 
I'll do this, and then if I attack without the choice band, I'm dealing 90 damage, which is not enough. So I need the choice band to deal 140, 150, wait, what? Oh, I, no, I didn't play Kukui. 150, 160, minus 20. Oh yeah, there's only two stack attackers now. Which is a better Zoropod list? These are Prams. I feel like Prams is better. Gabrino. I feel like Prams is definitely better. I do feel like Prams is definitely better. We see a B-string, that's fine. We're so far ahead here. Like attack a stack attacker being powered up is not an issue. A DOS main being powered up would be an issue, but there's only stack attackers, Naganadels, and then this guy. Which is nothing to write home about. Let me see an ultra space, that's fine. Is Azul's or Pram's list better? Aren't they very similar, Burrito Boy? Aren't they like almost identical? Okay, so we see the dust main. We see a palpad. That palpad though. Unless you're dead drawing, which I assume my opponent is because he put back the copycat and the Cynthia. Unless you're dead drawing. No reason to do that, I feel. Okay, but some damage. We're gonna take another two prizes. Um, do I even need to trade? I don't think I need to. I can just move over for whatever I need. Which is literally nothing here. Maybe the switch, I guess. It's the most useful card I have left in my deck. Uh, I really don't need to trade. I will ace Arola. Yeah, we have this one in the back. Completely, completely under control. We're gonna DCE, we're gonna choice man again. And then we just ride just beating. We're down to two prizes. We just have to go through the motions to finish this game off. Um, I can palp at both ace Arolas back. We should be good. We generally, generally should be good. And then if at some point, for whatever reason, I miss an ace Arola, <clears throat> or rather, my next ace Arola could be uh, powering up Golisabud. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Very similar list. What's the game plan for Zorg against Shrine decks? I mean, if it's Buzz Scarb, uh, it completely depends on what version of Zorg you're using, Dars, and um, how, what's your stadium count, um, what's your field blower count and what shrine deck you're up against so <laughs> that broad of um that broad of a question is just impossible to answer like that okay so double acerola i will smooth over for an acerola i kind of just want to play it super safe to the point where i uh, what's my discard here the one but um, to the point where I don't um, mess this up and then suddenly I'm in a potential deck out situation so I mean I think I just heal here and then pursue this Naganadel wherever it decides to go right I'll bench I'll evolve I'll DCE I'll choice band and then I'll righteous yeah, I know I have a Judge Burrito Boy, but I don't want to be put in a situation where uh, decking out is an issue. So I want to make sure I have all the outs, the Cynthia, the Judge, and the Rescue Stretcher. That's what I was saying. We see a Max Potion, that's fine. This just makes the, the, the game go on for an extra turn. Um, super annoying that my opponent is doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and touch the Craft then. Um, that's, that doesn't give me game though, because my GX attack doesn't KO Kartana because of the double stack attack, so never mind. Uh, thoughts on Metagross GX decks? Oh my gosh. Metagross GX, um, it's potentially okay. Potentially okay, just... I feel like it's a bit too, too slow against Zork. And then Zoro Garb, like Garb punishes the, oh my gosh, the fast versions. Wow, my opponent is literally just doing this to annoy us. Literally just doing that to annoy us. 
literally just doing that to annoy us. That's three back to back to back max potions. My opponent still had six prizes. My opponent should have conceded a long time ago. Like, you don't get anything for living for longer. <laughs> And then Kuzma switch just hunts down this Naganadel, which could be Max Potion or Acer Oled again. And yeah. Energy hits for 120, Kuzma energy KO. Finally. <laughs> Finally, right? Finally. So DCE, choice band to make sure I'm not messing up. And Riot is beating for the game. Okay. So yeah, Zero Blood. I wanna face off against a Shrine deck. I really wanna face off against a Shrine deck. Really, really wanna face off against a Shrine deck with Zero Blood. Coin flip. I would like to go first. I don't know what we're up against. Maybe a Zorak mirror match. Uh, our hand is not great. It's actually pretty bad. Our hand is actually pretty bad. Well, we're gonna get a few, at least one extra card, if not more, from Mulligans. And we are up against a Zorak deck that also has Macargo. And yeah, Joe, I agree. <laughs> I agree that Zorg still stands very good against the meta. And Severus Dog, are Buzzle, Mini Garbiter, meta deck or anti-meta? I mean, they were built as an anti-meta deck, right? They are built as an anti-meta deck. However, um, geez, what's the discard? Um, since they dominated so much, they are now probably um, the meta, right? Like now the meta is how do you counter shrine decks potentially? So I, do I go Apricorn Maker or do I go Cynthia here? What's my nest ball? One nest ball is prized. I can't go for a double nest ball anyways. So I think it's Cynthia here. This really sucks though. And I can't even attach energy to a Zorua because because of the potential free retreat into Lele DCE KO. Okay, this is as good as I could have hoped for. This is actually as good as I could have hoped for. My Zoro is safe and I have the potential to get a bunch of stuff here. I'll just go Zoro again and then we pass. We have at least one trade, potentially two, potentially even three, but these two double troll definitely go into Lele. Whilst we have to go Layla for Cynthia, my opponent just has their raw Apricorn Maker. So in order to make up for this, we're definitely gonna need to get a turn to KO. What is better, Zora Black and Rogue or Zora Golisabut? They both have um, good traits, right? Like individually, they are both very good decks. Which one is better depends on the meta game. If the meta is filled with Zorak decks, then Zoro Lycan is probably the better call. If the meta is more varied, then Zoro Golizabud might be a bit more well-rounded. Yeah, that's a very that's way too specific of a question. Okay, we see a return to Azoro. I feel like that's a mistake. I definitely feel like that is a mistake. I really hope I find a DC though. Okay, I really need a DCE. I do have the Lele, I do have another Cynthia. I do have four DCEs. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Ultra Wall into Lele, into Cynthia. So we're gonna see 10 cards. We're gonna see the next 10 cards in our deck. Can we, or can we not? Can we or can we not find that DCE? Okay, we're gonna see the next 12 cards in our deck. 
we've already seen six let's see another six thanks to trade okay perfect there's the tc that we were looking for you don't see how Galispot is better than like and rather than a typing well typing is the main difference between them and um, the fact that Galispot only requires one energy to attack like and rock needs two so two big differences i would say and major enough to where um <laughs> very nice joe bro major enough noivern to where um one deck can be more successful than the other one yeah so These other Brazilian decks and people playing Macargo instead of Lele for support. Is Macargo good? Yeah, we're playing Macargo ourselves right here. Macargo is a really, really good card. Like, think about all the times where you hope you top deck for a card. Well, now you don't have to hope, you just get the card you need. Okay, so only one trade for my opponent. If he goes resource management this turn, I am okay with that because there's not much of value he gets back in exchange for one energy. And it seems like that's the plan. That is indeed my opponent's plan. However, I feel like I definitely hunt down the Zorua here because my opponent limited to one trade would be really good. He's gonna put back the Kuzma, the Cynthia and the Stretcher, I feel. Right? No, wow, double nest ball and a stretcher. Why would you trade the Guzma then? Okay. So there's my or my guru. I definitely want a Guzma KO the Zorua to have like triple trade versus one trade. That's just a huge disadvantage for my opponent. And if he's not running enhanced hammer so far, which the Brazil lists were not running enhanced hammer. Um, this might be good enough to to win us a game potentially And yeah, triple triple Guzma. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up the Zorua here No reason not to I would love to have a win put down this turn, but can't have it all right can't have it all basically I'm ahead to prizes. I Have a huge hand versus my opponent's small hand So I'm gonna be able to cycle through my Zorx with um, a Zorola and Palpat continually very easily Whereas my opponent probably won't be able to. Our meta is going to flip upside down when we get Lost Thunder. I mean, that's not going to happen until two months from now. So I have no idea. Here we see a Cynthia. We see a trade. We see the Kalisapod. So this is a Zorak mirror, but our starting hand was much better than my opponent's. Or going first, like actually. Going first is the big reason why we are able to do all of this. So I'm gonna trade to the den. Even though my opponent only hit me for 60, I have to heal this turn. I definitely have to heal this turn. Because um, if I don't, hmm, my hand is so good that, well, I guess I'm a cargo. My hand is, my deck is so low now that the Macargo doesn't matter anymore. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so 60 damage doesn't seem like a lot, but then a full bench plus a choice band is 150, or a grass plus a choice band is 150, and therefore, I needed to protect. Yeah, I needed to protect that Zorak. I don't want to give up two prizes. Yeah. And Legendary, how are you dealing against Hoopa's abilities in your decks? With this deck, you would have to use your own Guru. And Coco. You would have to spread a lot. Spread, 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 heal, spread, heal, spread, heal, spread, heal. Until you win or something. <laughs> we see a Nest Ball, first Lockma. If my bone doesn't heal here and attack, then he's in a lot of trouble. So he needs a very perfect hand of um, Acer Ola and Chandler Zorua. Oh wow, Ghost Coco, not even Zorua. 
Either he has two Zoro prized or he just misplayed big time there. But there's absolutely no reason not to go for a Zorua there. Okay, so he does have a Zorua. I just Guzma and pick off the Zorua here. 60 damage doesn't matter anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and pick off the Zorua. That Coco is a big mistake for my opponent. Unless he has two Zorua prized. Unless he has two Zorua prized, that Coco was a big mistake for my opponent. So, I don't think I need to trade anymore. All the cards I have are quite valuable, in fact. So, I'm gonna pick off the Zoroa here. And then I always. The Coco is another. Well, I guess I always have a non GX. A less than 120 um, attacker there. So, it doesn't technically matter. But now I'm at an even prices, but I always have either the Coco or the Slugma, aka my cargo, that I can KO in order to. Um, take my last two, take my last prize, or take another prize, and then I just have to deal with that GX. But it's his six cards and no Zorards versus my three, six, nine, 12, 13 cards and triple Zorg. So, and I'm just gonna keep hunting down the Zoruas. I'm just gonna keep doing that. And if I run off to, out of Kuzmas, I'm gonna Acerola, and I'm gonna use resource management to put back Kuzmas. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. What's the best partner? Um, Fire Eyes. I feel like uh, Garbodor is probably the best partner. I feel like Garbodor is probably the best partner or one of the best partners. Same for... Um, same for... Um, uh, I can't speak today. Zorg is the best, I mean, Garbage is the best partner, or Kalisa, but potentially. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and Guzma, right? Guzma and attack with a brand new Zorg. Is there anything I can trade or want to trade? Probably not, so I'll just Righteous. I, I guess the Zorua. So I'm down to two prizes. I'm at a point where I could just continually Kuzma. Like, that's my last Kuzma, but then I have Palpat. I can just double Kuzma two turns in a row, pick up the Ranguru, pick up the Koko, pick up the Macargo, and then pick up another one of those, um, which is left over. We're gonna see a Nest Ball. If my opponent grabs a Zorua, then he misplayed by getting the Koko. 100% he misplayed by getting the Koko. Okay, I assume now then that my opponent had two Zorua was prized. But once again, guys, like this is a teachable moment, if you will. If you're at regionals and that's what your board looks like, just scoop and go on to the next game. Unless it's game three, I guess. But if it's game one or if it's game two and you lost and you won the first game, then <laughs> then just scoop. And even like if if you're hungry, like just scoop at that point <laughs> and go have something to eat and then refresh for the next round. We're gonna see a smooth over. We're gonna see a smooth over. Enhance hammer, not a problem whatsoever. I just, I can't win next turn, but I'm still gonna win this game no matter what. No trouble. Double Zora prize. That's very unfortunate for my opponent. Very, very unfortunate for my opponent. Here's another Golisopod. Retreats. Hit for 120. That's fine. I think I'm just gonna go for the for the KO2 Pokemon strategy. And now it's gonna be Mach Cargo. Now I'm gonna go after the Mach Cargo. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and heal this guy and I'm gonna go ahead and do that and energy and now I'm gonna trade I mean I should have traded first whatever it doesn't matter at this point there's trade number one 
I just don't double trade, of course. <laughs> I mean, triple trade. I can't double trade, I just don't double trade. Triple trade, rather, because then I lose by deck out. Unless I pop it back to Kuzma's, but I just want to be super safe. Yeah, I want to be super, super safe. Okay. There's absolutely nothing my opponent can do here. Absolutely nothing. I mean, just hope I don't have. Just hope I don't have a Palpat or a Forest Kuzma. <laughs> In before illegal handiwork. And yeah, my opponent just attacks. I'm gonna go ahead and pull pad, put back to Guzma's, and then trade. I can't not draw a Guzma here, right? I can't not draw a Guzma, so I can just pick up this guy, and that will be the game. So I won against a Zorg Mirror by taking out six prize cards. Taking out six, six prize cards. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. So guys, that will be all for the Zorak Elizabeth deck. Um, pretty strong deck, of course. All the Zorak decks are pretty strong, I would say. Um, Elizabeth does have some nice type advantage against um, like weird Swamper decks or Empoleon maybe? Is Empoleon weak to grass or lightning? Um, it does enjoy using Tapu Goku as well, there's Synergy, and uh, the grass typing helps with Lycanroc, so, a lot of potential there um, in that deck. And so guys, if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel. If you are watching on Twitch, guys, um, it's getting closer to uh, the, the coaching hours and I do have to go to something before I do coaching, so I won't be able to feature the Altaria deck that I want to showcase, but I'm sure I'll be able to do that tomorrow. So, I hope you guys will join me for tomorrow, and remember, September, you can renew your subscriptions for $1, which is really nice, it really supports the channel, and thank you to everyone who was here, I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I will be back tomorrow for some more PTCGO action. Thank you guys, and until next time, bye-bye!